Hello everyone, Darren here with Renaissance Coders. Thanks for joining us as we continue building the Enemy Designer tool. This is an editor scripting tutorial series if you haven't been following along. And in the last video, we went ahead and added some uh, text to fill the regions of this window. So we have Enemy Designer, Mage, Warrior, and Rogue text showing up here. Uh, and those are restrained by layouts that we created uh, earlier. Now in this video, we're going to be accessing some scriptable object classes that we created earlier and so we're going to be finally manipulating the important data that we'll end up outputting uh, using this tool. So specifically what we'll be doing is modifying uh, the various damage types, weapons types, um, strategy types that we defined in a types class earlier uh, and we're going to be using enumeration fill fields to fill the data that we need to fill. Okay, so what I've done is I added a few static variables for holding the references to our data. I've done it for mage data, warrior data, and rogue data, and I've also created some public property counterparts for that data. And I know that everything is static. It's purely for convenience sake. If you want to use a different accessibility option, that's fine. Um, we're going to be accessing this data later in this series from a different window class. I also created a public static void and the data, this is going to uh, initialize our scriptable object properly by calling scriptableObject.createInstance. And we want to make sure that we're casting that into the type of data that we have. So I've done that for Mage, Warrior, and Rogue. Now we want to make sure that we're calling init data inside on enable. So we'll go ahead and do that. I want this to be initialized every time the user opens the window for the first time. Okay, let's get into adding the enumeration field, which is what the title of this video is. So to add the enumeration field, say for mage -dama damage type, we'll go ahead we'll go ahead and uh, write the following line. Okay, so on the right side of the assignment operator, we have uh, editor GUI layout .enum pop up. And then we want to pass our uh, variable that we want to modify the value of. And the right hand side of the assignment operator is actually what's going to be drawing the enumeration field. We could actually just write this line of code right here. So we could actually write this and we would get no errors. But because we want to return whatever value is modified into an actual variable, we want to make sure that we're writing it in this way. So let's go back to our window and see what we have. Okay, and so now we have our enumeration field showing up. You can see that we have fire or ice, which is the mage damage type options. But if you notice, we have a little bit of a problem because from the user's point of view, I don't really know what this enumeration is for. I can see that we have fire and ice, but what I really need is a label to the left of this to tell me what it is that I'm modifying. So let's go back up here now we can use GUI layout or GUI layout.label just like this and say what we're modifying is the uh, damage type. So we can say damage just like that. Let's go back and see what happens. Okay, so it places damage right above the enumeration field, but we want it to be to the left. So what we have in our GUI class is something called uh, begin horizontal and that's whenever we want to have a group uh, a group of GUI layout calls on one horizontal row so what we'll say is editor GUI layout dot begin horizontal and then underneath the group we'll say end horizontal As I've said before, anytime we use a begin function, we want to have the end counter, uh, counterpart function. So we'll save that and see what our result is. And now you can see that we have the damage label to the left of our enumeration. Now that we know how to do the enumeration for one type of variable, we can do that for the rest of the variables in this uh, window. So we need mage damage type, we need mage data 
uh, let's see, let's look at our types. We need mage weapon type, and then we need warrior class type, warrior weapon type, rogue weapon type, and rogue strategy type. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. Uh, you guys can stick around and watch me as I add those, uh, or you can go on to the next tutorial. Because really all I'm going to be doing is copying and pasting and modifying the mage data field or the damage, uh, the damage type field. So again, feel free to stay, but thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.